So last week I agreed with an intellectual malfeasant that embodies everything I hate about motivated reasoning, and this week I'm going to bitch about an intellectual heavyweight that I absolutely fucking love. And it didn't have to be this way, guys. I was going to do this whole diatribe about the fuckwit preacher at my niece's wedding that hijacked the captive audience to tell us all about how Jesus Jesus was. Had it all worked out in my head. That's what I planned to do all week. And then this shit with Patton Oswalt hit my radar. Now, full disclosure here, I am a huge Patton Oswalt fan. Hell, he almost made young adult watchable. He's one of those guys that knows all the words, but he still says fuck a lot. He's hilarious. He's an atheist. He did the sky cake bit for fuck's sake. And so with years of slobbering fandom under my belt, all of a sudden here's this clickbaity headline about him comparing Bill Maher and Richard Dawkins to Fred Phelps. <sighs> Surely it was taken out of context, right? After all, this was a raw story headline I was looking at. They're just one step up from tabloids most of the time, so they probably just cherry-picked a few words out of context, riled up a bunch of atheists, tried to drive some traffic their way, right? So I went to the original interview on Salon, and I read the whole thing. And at first, I'm just reinforcing this feeling that the raw story headline was unjustified. At the beginning, Oswald is just, you know, he's talking about how people should be allowed to joke about whatever they want. He's, he's justifying rape jokes. He's justifying racist jokes. He's making the point that seems absolutely contradictory to the context that Raw Story would have left me expecting, right? And then about two-thirds of the way into the interview, the dude from Salon ropes him in. Now, up until now, he's essentially been making the point that people should be allowed to make jokes about whatever they want to joke about, and news sites like Salon shouldn't be able to get pissy about them. The editor that's interviewing him, David Daly, is arguing that comedy might be a great place to start the conversation, but outrage does the grunt work. Now, the problem arises, though, when Oswald gets so married to his point that he starts defending it even when it becomes absurd. So Daly asks him about Bill Maher and how he feels about Bill Maher's approach to Islam, and then he says it, quote, I feel about Bill Maher and Richard Dawkins the way that most Christians feel about Fred Phelps, end quote. So it wasn't enough to just throw the subject of the question under the bus. He had to make an unscheduled, unprovoked stop so he could drag one of our generation's greatest science communicators onto this bus so that he could then toss him under too. He goes on, quote, Look, being an atheist means you don't give a fuck about what anyone believes in. I don't think any of it's real, but you can go ahead and do it. I'm not trying to destroy religion, end quote. Now, he actually goes on to say even more dumb shit on this subject, but let's just start with this Fred Phelps comparison since it was so pivotal to all the clickbaity headlines. I assume what he means here is that he's ashamed of the way that Dawkins and Marr present the message that he agrees with. After all, about half of American Christians agree with Phelps' basic premise about God-hating fags. They just don't like the way he delivers that message. So the qualitative part of this comparison, I guess, is to suggest that Marr pointing out on his show that Muslims are responsible for way more than their fair share of religious violence is approximately as inappropriate as it would have been if he showed up at a religious funeral service with a giant Nietzsche quote on a board with a, with a bigoted slur on it somewhere, too. Those two things are about equally deserving of shame in Oswald's mind, apparently. Also, Dawkins did some unspecified thing that's also that bad. Look. I disagree with Oswald's placating, we can all just get along, demonstrably ineffective take on the promotion of rationalism. I disagree with the insinuation he's making that there's no real harm in religion or that institutionally indoctrinating children to believe that science is their enemy is just a matter of personal preference. I disagree with the blanket get-out-of-jail-free card he waves over every manner of religious violence later in the interview by suggesting that religion can never have anything to do with it. I don't agree with the way he's defending Charlie Hebdo out of one chin and then lambasting Bill Maher out of the other, but it would be the height of bombastic bullshit to compare him to Fred Phelps because of it, no matter how much I disagree with his approach. And as to this absurd notion that proper atheism requires complete apathy towards what other people believe, that's even more insulting. What, I don't care if you, if you don't believe that gay people should have equal rights? I don't care if you believe that transgendered people aren't really people? I don't care if you finance a worldwide child rape amnesty campaign? I don't care if you carve out exemptions in American laws that allow you to implement misogynistic policies in the workplace. I don't care if you restrict access to contraception. I don't care if you convince mentally ill people that they're filled with demons that you can exercise. Well, fuck you and your dispassionate cowardice. I do care. And I care enough to be outraged. But to hear Oswald say it, it's all right to not believe all that stuff as long as you're not a jerk about it. You know, this, this half-ass effort to reach across the aisle is predicated on the preposterous idea that somehow we can look at God belief in a vacuum, as though religion can be divorced from all the consequences of religion. 
as though there was some innocuous way to base one's entire worldview on a self-contradicting lie that takes moral authority out of your own hands and places it in the hands of an unvetted steward, as though there was a harmless way to believe in God. 